Hey there, Oz here, back for another one. Um, I recently saw uh, an interview with uh, an author, Alexis Clark, and she had written a book called Enemies in Love. And the book is dealing with nurses of color serving in, during World War II and how they were either assigned to hospitals with soldiers of color or they were put with uh, German uh, Nazi prisoners of war. And it was a very fascinating interview and the book is dealing with the relationship that happens, a relationship, a marriage, between one of the nurses and one of the POWs. Um, by the way, it's something that the armed forces felt would never happen. And that's one of the reasons that they assigned, me. <clears throat> they assigned these nurses of color to the German POWs. Anyway, the book in the interview, she was talking about some other facts which were kind of amazing. And I haven't read the book. I did get it, and I had it sent to someone else. And I'm going to talk about the two, maybe three things that the uh, author touched on that I find particularly relevant right now in the times that we're going through here, the 5th of August, 2020, and uh, prior, months prior. So, <coughs> one, <coughs> <coughs> wow, excuse me, one of the things during this time, 1945, uh, the president at the time, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, um, I can't say that he did a television announcement because I don't know that he did, but television was around. So uh, went on television, possibly went uh, on the radio, newspapers, putting out a call for nurses. Apparently, there were, America was having a shortage of nurses, and he was actually calling for 18,000 nurses to apply. That's what they needed. Well, at this exact moment that he's doing this announcement, there were 9,000 applicants for nurses, they were women of color. Uh, how can this be? You're asking for nurses, you're saying there's a shortage of nurses, and yet you have this huge pool, huge number of women willing to serve and they're being completely overlooked, disregarded, whatever you want to call it. I found that quite astounding. And I act, I had to, before I came on here and did this, I had to look that up. I said, that's a pretty tough thing to just go on, on here and start saying that. And yes, you can Google that fact. That is what the sitting president in 1944 said and did. And there were, in fact, 9,000 applicants. They were all women of color that were not, I don't know what you want to call it, overlooked, disregarded, not seen. There, wa there was an outcry. And so 
what that outcry got us during that time. 500 nurses of color were allowed to serve. I remember there were 9,000 applicants, 500. And there was a core, an opposing number, of 59,000 nurses, women of non-color. So 500 as opposed to 59,000. Okay. That to me is just, wow. Wow. And I, that comes up because, and I don't want to single this quarterback out, but a while ago, this quarterback made the comment that he couldn't go along with or respect anyone that disrespected the American flag. He had his father, grandfather, great-grandfather had served in the war, served their country. How can you disrespect the flag? And this, I had seen the interview right when all of that was going on. And from what I understand, some of the uh, some of his fellow NFLers have got reached out to him, gotten in touch with him. He now realizes that that whole Colin Kaepernick thing had nothing to do with the flag. But here's my take. There, there, this there's another side to this whole thing. You had that going on with the nurses. You had men of color serving in the armed forces who were not able to go into, I don't know if it was the mess hall or the canteen, or if they were just utilizing restaurants in the cities and the areas where they were at. These soldiers of color were not allowed inside with their fellow soldiers of non-color. But the German POWs were. So now here you are sitting outside, not, not going where they're going. You're fighting with the other American soldiers that are going in there to eat. You're fighting with them, but you can't go in there but the enemy, the enemy that you are, we are fighting against, America, the enemy we are fighting against, they are. They're going into these places. How do you, how do you get that? I mean, these are our men going to fight, representing their country, and then they come back and this is what they encounter I mean that I these are these are just facts this is how it was and you can say during that time but the whole thing is how far have we come since then because the the BLM, the Black Lives Matter movement, is in force, going real strong. So, then you have another part. Like I stated in the, in the very beginning, the few nurses of color that were allowed to serve, they were put either with soldiers of color only, or, or they were put with the German POWs. And the reasoning, the thought behind that was the Germans are not going to find these beautiful women because they're women of color. The German soldiers are not going to be attracted to them. So here you have people 
and authority putting their beliefs, their thoughts, not only on other Americans, but on a, a, a complete, these are Germans. These are not, these are German, German Nazi prisoners of war. And so they, and then here go, because the whole, this whole book is about a romance, a marriage. They have two kids together, two boys, a nurse, woman of color, and a German prisoner of war. That's what the book is about. But along with this story of this incredible love and romance, you had these other things. I, I, like I said, I didn't read the book. I got it for somebody else because I thought she would love it. I haven't read it. I don't really want to. But what astounded me were these facts that came up, this research that the author had done, Alexis Clark, had done in writing her book. And I just found that astounding. That's just astounding to me. That, yeah, yeah, given the times where we were, but that, that happened. That happened. That is a reality. You can Google it. You, you can get that. The same numbers that I got, you can Google it and you can see them. So I'm, just, I'm not, those, I think those numbers, those facts speak for themselves. There is nothing else you have to say because that is not right. And I can't even imagine going to fight for your country, wanting to go and fight in a war for your country, and then coming back, and this is what you have to encounter. This is what you have to see. The enemy, the person that you are, are fighting against, the person that you are killing, is being allowed, the prisoners from that war, are being allowed to eat in the same place that your other American brothers are being allowed to eat in, in non-color, and you're sitting and watching this. So you've been in a war fighting, and then you're seeing this. I don't know. Disheartening? Probably not strong enough. That, that, and, and they served. They continued to serve. Why, why has there not been a movie made about that? That is like, the, that book, Enemies in Love by Alexis Clark, that should be a movie. It should be a movie. The, the times right now, it, unbelievable. True story. Not fiction, true story. It happened. So, that's all I wanted to say. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe, like, you know the drill. See you next time.